Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining November's Open Alex webinar. Today we're going to be focusing on international intelligence. I'm really excited about this for a couple of reasons. The first being that I'm in Barcelona right now, where I've spent the week talking about the importance of open research information infrastructure like Open Alex. And so that international context is very high, but also because we're moving the format a little bit to being more presentation from from more presentation to more actual engagement and walking through the user interface. So quickly, the agenda, I'll give a tiny bit of context, but really we wanna start talking about the use cases for international intelligence specifically through the, um, the user interface. And then my colleague, Jason Portnoy, who's on the call is going to be doing um, a walkthrough of, or a showcase rather, of University of Washington's international dashboard that has open Alex data to give you a sense of what's possible beyond just the user interface. Just like every presentation we've talked about, the idea here is that research is happening and when you collect data on it, you can do analyses on those data to provide um, more informative um, actions, strategies, policy, management decisions that are informed by data. And this is really where Open Alex comes in because most institutions don't have an inventory of all the work that they're doing because publication processes happen outside of the university. And so Open Alex is going through all the scholarly works that it can find, and it's collecting information on who published it, what it's on, what institutions they're at, where in the world those institutions are, who's funding it, all of this type of metadata that allows us to do the use cases we've talked about in the last couple of webinars, but also specifically today for international use cases. To give you a sense of the types of things that universities are asking around uh, international intelligence, it's very different for every institution. And sometimes it's a government asking for the whole country versus an institution asking for themselves. But there'll be questions like, which countries do we collaborate with? Something very simple like that. Or how are we contributing to the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Which if you're unfamiliar with those, they're a global blueprint essentially for thinking about how we as a world work together on research for impact but it might also be as specific as which of our researchers are collaborating with a specific country on a specific topic or with something global like open science, how do we compare with other uh, countries in that shift? So that's what we mean when we're talking about international intelligence, but just like with everything in open Alex, it comes down to this really elegant data structure that we have where you're gonna build a search query essentially using a variety of metadata filters and I will show some of those later, to get a subset of the information that you want to be analyzing. Maybe that's the end goal and you just wanted to find those publications, but you can also use the count by feature to do analyses on that. So all of it is really going to come down to that. Just like last week, I, or sorry, last month rather, on research intelligence, we have a slide with some of the common use cases and then how you could build that in Open Alex using filters and group by features. I'm not going to go over that, but I wanted you to have it available afterwards. And for those of you who are watching the recording, you could stop and look at those in more detail. Um, we're going to go in and actually do those in the uh, user interface. So very excited to say that the user interface is now in beta. And we've seen a lot of people have already started to use it, which is great. You can access it at openalex.org, just how you've been going to Open Alex. But you'll see the, the landing page shifted a little bit now to focus on really just diving into the user interface. You can also go to openalex.org backslash works to get there directly if you don't want that one click. And a, a quick point here to say that this really is in beta and um, it's a pretty exciting thing to be able to share with the world, but we're also really hoping that you'll share with us things that you love about it, things that you hate about it, things that aren't working, or if you find any bugs or things that you'd like to see in the future. It's that sort of community feedback that we're using to shape this. So please do use it and, and start sending us feedback. And of course, the feedback is openalex.org backslash feedback. But I did want to make a point here to say this is completely open. You don't need a subscription here. You don't need access from us. You don't need to enter your email. Anyone in the world can use this. And there's a few benefits that are coming with that. And one of them that I'm really excited about, just to give you an example, is that anytime someone gives a presentation now with an analysis from Open Alex data, you can get a link to replicate the exact analysis that they did in our user interface and you don't need a subscription. So I showed earlier that that graph, I didn't say what it was, but it's all the collaborations from the country, uh, country Germany 
around the world who they collaborate with a total number of publications. And I just use the UI to create a, a, a link that anyone in the world can now replicate that exact analysis. And there's a QR code to get that data. I graphed it in Excel, but just to show you, this is the type of thing that we're gonna be able to start doing. When you're at a conference and you see something, you'll be able to snapshot and, and do that. So no more uh, presentation. I don't know why it's clicking through so quick, but no more presentation. I wanna go directly in, but I did have one last slide that has the link to the dashboard that Jason's gonna go over in a little bit, just in case people needed to find that later. So here we go. Really excited to share this with everyone. So I'm just gonna go to openalex.org. Well, you can see works is already there, but if I hadn't had works in there, this is the landing page for, for openalex.org. You'll see information about us over here on the left. You can learn more or you can just start exploring the data. And this is what gets you to the user interface. A few things to orient you to this for the first time. There's four color card co color coded menus at the top. This first one filter is where you're gonna build your search query. If you're used to something like web of science, when you click filter, one of them in here is a search where you could actually search key terms, but you can see all the other different types of searches and metadata fields that you can apply filters as available here. So let's say for instance, I wanted to look for author. I always look for myself, a pop-up comes up and you can just start typing. There's not many Kyle Demases, which is really great for me, but you can see now it's filtered all of these works to just the ones by that author profile. Similarly, if you had done that for your institution, it would show you those. The next two um, menus here are sort by and column. And both of these are about visualizing the subset of results that we have here. So we're just looking at my publications and right now it's sorted by citation count. So you can see my highest cited paper is coming up at the top and you go down my lower cited papers are down there. You could change that. So another common one people use is date to see my most uh, recent papers first, for instance, but that's something you can do very easily right there. This next piece column, I'm really excited about because you can see here, there's a bit of a default where you have title, year, open access, citation count, and the, the type of the work, but you can add other columns here. So if you're exploring work for the first time and you wanna see something else, you can add that column here. So um, for instance, what would be a good one? From Global South won't really work with me because I don't have any publications from there. Um, but if you wanted to do, for instance, language, it's now adding a column that has language. Again, I only publish in English, but this is one way you can start looking at, for instance, your French authors, which publication language they're publishing in. So that's how you create these subsets and then look at the data. Then last piece is this count by feature. And this is where you're gonna do analyses. So if I wanted to say, for instance, uh, of these are all the metadata fields you can do analyses on, but what's my publication trend look like over time? I'm just going to do count by year as an example. And you can see here, my last paper was in 2020. I sort of stopped doing research and been doing a lot more administration, uh, but you can see my publications in each year over time and how that's changed. So something to point out about this, you can see under this count by year, we have two options. You can close out of this and say, I'm done with the analysis, or you can download this. And if I click download, it's gonna give me a CSV that has each year and the total number of works so that you can replicate this or um, do whatever you need to do outside of OpenAlex. And this download up here, you can see is, is grayed out. But if I close out of this, now if I hit download, I'm gonna download the entire list here. So the options that are default are .csv. And if you're used to using uh, WAS format in any of your, your pipelines, you can, uh, you can download that there as well. So really excited about that. The other piece I'll quickly say is if you click API, it shows you the API call that's being used to generate this exact um, user interface. So if I copy this and then in my browser, I just paste it it's now showing what the exact API call that that was, um, the exact API response is coming back from that call. So you could send this to somebody on your IT team, for instance, or, or do anything else that you need um, through APIs. On that note, actually the, um, the URL at the top is also changing as you do this. So you see, I, I added Kyle Demas, but let's say we also wanted to say, um, 
is open access. I've got a couple things blocking this. Um, is also open access. Now it's added that up here. You can see open access is .oa. This URL, you can copy and paste into a new browser and it will show the exact same thing. You can send this to a friend. You can look at this on a phone. This is how I made that QR code earlier. So this is something we're really, we're really excited about. But I had to do a quick walkthrough so that I could do some of the international use cases. And I do want to spend some time on those. So I wrote down a few examples that I wanted to go through. The first would be if you're looking at a particular country, which SDGs are they contributing to? So I'm just going to close out of these filters that I had and go back to the, you know, the 246 million works in Open Alex and say, I just want to know for, let's say, Costa Rica, so institution country, Costa Rica. So it's much smaller now, so 66,000 works. Um, how are they contributing to different sustainable development goals? So now I'm going to, under group by, click sustainable development goal or SDG. And this is giving us for their contributions, which of those have been tagged against a sustainable development goal. You could export this, uh, you could um, download the data, send this to someone else, or maybe this is just the end and you wanted to know which were their top contributing SDGs. That's a really simple example. You could also do concepts. So maybe you don't care about the SDG, but you want something more close to the subject area. So I switched there to concept and you can see now humanities, art, philosophy. So that's a very simple analysis looking at a country and their contributions. Another thing we see is let's look at two countries at the same time and look at their collaborations and, and what are the characteristics of that research? So as an example, I'm in Spain, so oops, I'm in concept. So let me go to institution country, Spain, and then let's say Italy as well. So a couple things I want to point out. When you put two in here, this or now pops up. And the default here for combining within the same metadata filter is or. So this means either it's published in Spain or it's published in Italy. And you can see there's 5 million works. I actually want the ones that are published by authors in both Spain and Italy. So I just changed that to and. And you can see now at the bottom 128,000 works, which is closer to what I was expecting for their collaborative work. Um, and this gives you all that list of, of publications. So right now it's sorted by citation count. So maybe I just wanted to see the top cited work. And you can see here, it's got a check mark for open access, which means you can actually access the PDF directly. And maybe I'll show that quickly. So if I click on this, there's a, a flyout on the, on the right side that has information about the article. You can go through the authors. You can see the citations, what it's related to, the abstracts down at the bottom, the different versions that are available online. But importantly, at the top here, these blue icons for PDF in a document in the two different formats, this is openly available so anyone in the world can then go read that PDF. It also gives you the API call for this particular work. So you can see I clicked that and it opened up in my browser to show all the information that we have on that work. So that's pretty exciting as well. The last one is a barcode, and this just shows all the unique identifiers that we have about that work. So it's Open Alex identifier, it's DOI, it's PubMed, it's PubMed Central. All of that you can find very easily. If you wanted to know, for instance, instead of the highest cited, you wanted to know the most recent collaborative work, you could do that here as well. So we're close enough to 2024 now that enough journals have a 2024 issue. We're starting to see that here pop up. Um, I think that's what I was going to show there. The next one I wanted to do is something a little more complicated. So let's say you're an institution and you want to know which countries are working on a very specific topic that you're interested in. And this was one that actually came up recently, and I thought it was a good example. Someone who's working on the sustainable development goal, um, gender equality, but only as it applies to, for instance, a field of ecology. So I'm going to start with that. And then you want to find out which country is working on that. So I'm going to go to concept and search ecology, but you could also do search terms here if you'd rather use those. And then I'm going to layer on another um, SDG, for instance, another metadata field for gender equality. 
And now it's combining both of these and all of these publications are ones that are in the field of ecology by the concept tagging and also our SDG contributions. But let's say you wanna then count by country because you wanna know which countries are really doing a lot of work in that. So I'm gonna to go to count by country. So the United States, UK, Canada, Australia, and then maybe I'm in this field and I think, you know, this is about what I was expecting, no big surprises, but I don't know if you saw something in here that you wanted to drill in on a bit more, like let's say Sweden caught my eye. Um, you can then add Sweden as a filter in here. So add country, Sweden, to then zoom in on that country and see which institutions. So right now I've still got the country up here. So it's not surprising that Sweden is the top. Um, but let's say which institutions are working on this, this very specific field in, uh, in Switzerland, in Sweden, sorry. Um, so then your international office knows who they can start building relationships with um, on that specific topic. So two more quick examples before I pass it over to my colleague Jason to go over that international dashboard. Um, the first is a very specific one, but we see happen a lot where, for instance, a government agency like Global Affairs Canada will come out with a very specific funding call on a certain topic collaborating with a certain country. And you might want to find people who would be good collaborators for that. Um, so I'll give an example, close out a couple of these. Oops. Let's say the, the call is a collaborative opportunity with India. So I'll do India here is the country. And the call is on, um, I, I looked up one horned rhinoceros. And this is something that actually did come out at some point. So I'm gonna go under search because one horned rhinoceros is not something that's gonna be a concept. It's not an SDG, but it is something I can search through the databases. So one horned rhinoceros. I think it actually has a hyphen, so I'm gonna include that. Okay, so 89 results. You can see there's not a lot of work that is happening on this, um, but all of those publications are here. So you could export this list and do more analyses on it, but really what I was interested in, who are the authors who are working on that to try and build a team to do research? So if I go to count by author, it's going to bring up each author, the total number of publications they have that match that, uh, that search query. So these are just examples of ways that you can combine these, but you could imagine also saying, at my institution, um, I want to look at just collaborations with a specific country, and who are the top authors who are contributing there? So that's something you could do just as easily here by counting by author. And then the last one here I want to give as an example, we hear in the open science conversation more and more people are looking at other countries and they want to know how something has worked when they've implemented a new policy so that they can consider it or which countries are, are really leading in open access. And I think it's a great way of combining metadata fields. So I'll, I'll show that as an example. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to look at um, publications in France. Let's look at their open access progress. There's sort of two ways of approaching this. The first is to filter by France and say, these are all of the publications that have an affiliation in France. Um, you can then count by open access. So this is gonna give me a total count of open access is false and open access is true, but maybe this isn't as informative as looking at this over time. So I'm gonna stop count by here and I'm actually gonna add a second filter for open access. And you, you might, not have noticed, but when I clicked that, it just automatically went there. It didn't, I didn't need to type anything like I did in some of the other ones, because the assumption here is that when you click open access, you're looking for open access. If you want to change it and say no to open access, you can do that by hitting false here. But let's say now I want to look at that over time. How is that changing? These are now the publications with French affiliations that are open access and how it's changing over time. And you can see there's been a very fast increase. The most recent years, it's important to remember that sometimes there's a year uh, or, or a while before things do become open access. So that, that is something to keep in mind. But if I change this, you can see this is definitely changing over time very quickly. If I change that filter to open access equals false, you can see it's pretty much plateaued and now is starting to decline. 
Um, so this is the type of thing that we're seeing. And you could export this data and compare it against different countries. Um, you could look and say just our institution, when we collaborate with France, how is that changing? So maybe I'll try that as a um, institution. I'll say I'm at the University of Calgary and hope that they have some collaborations with, with France. Yes, so now you're looking at your collaboration as an institution with a whole country and those trends in open access. So I know that was a lot of information very quickly, but I wanted to give you a quick high level overview of what you could do in the user interface. And I see there's gonna be lots of questions, which is great, but we really do encourage all of you to go start playing with OpenAlex user interface, give us some feedback um, because that's really how we're gonna continue to benefit it now that it's in its beta phase. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn over to my colleague, Jason, who's gonna now show us a, I think I need to give him permission, um, who's now gonna show us a dashboard that the University of Washington has built off of our data to do customized international intelligence work. So Jason, I think you should be able to share your screen now. Let me know though, if that's not um, the case. Yeah, it looks, looks like it. Um, yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, thank, thank you, Kyle, <clears throat> uh, for for that. This, uh, are you seeing my screen? Okay. Yes. This is just showing the global publications. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, this is uh, um, a showcase of uh, what the University of Washington has done with Open Alex data. It's a uh, something they they developed on their own. Um, but they were able to to get the full data uh, for it to show off um, a dashboard of uh, their uh, global co-authored publications. Um, and so this is live uh, on their public site. The the URL was in the in the slide deck and uh, will be available if you want to check it out. Um, but uh, it's being actively used in the in the UW Global Office. Um, and I've uh, worked with them a little bit to. To help them get the data, but um, it's been uh, it's an app developed uh, entirely on their own. They download uh, all of the um, all of the Open Alex works uh, by uh, uh, but all the Open Alex works by uh, UW authors um, using using our our API, uh, and then combine it with their own HR data and um, do a little cleanup to uh, to get this dashboard. That um, that can show uh, global collaboration, and they're using it uh, to show off to different departments, faculty members, um, and uh, international um, institutions uh, like that uh, that come by um, uh, to meet with them. So it uh, it has three tabs. This is the global publications overview, and this is uh, sort of a general overview of everything. Uh, you can show it off to the different. Um, departments, they're able to, uh, U UW has three campuses. Um, Seattle campus is the big one, but there's also the, the Tacoma and the Basel campus. Um, and there are also uh, individual colleges um, within the uh, within the different campuses. And, um, and so uh, by connecting it to the HR data that they have, they're able to, uh, to identify like specifically the College of Education, um, you can show their international collaborations. Uh, so anything outside of the US, um, the the papers that are, are co-authored with, with uh, people from, from those countries. Uh, and then you have, um, over time, uh, you can see, uh, we're showing from the last uh, 20 years, I think, but, um, yeah, you can see the the number of faculty that are co-authoring internationally and the number of papers co-authoring internationally uh, and you get high level uh, statistics here now if we go to the next tab um this is specifically by faculty name um so this is everybody who's been linked uh from open alex to uh uw's internal hr uh records um and yeah i've uh Selected one, uh, Professor Christopher Murray, who uh, um, has done a lot of, or written a lot of papers, done a lot of international collaborations. So he's a good one to show off. 
uh, but um, you can see specifically his uh, collaboration around the world. Um, the uh, over time is is here, and then the different journals that that have co-authored publications and the different cities and uh, or different universities and and cities grouped by cities and and uh, country. Um, and then this last tab uh, shows by foreign university. Uh, and the example I've brought up here is, is Tsinghua University, which UW has a, uh, a, a healthy collaborative relationship with. They they um, uh, promote a lot of a lot of collaboration between UW authors and and Tsinghua University authors. Um, but uh, I was told that that when people from Tsinghua come by, they're they're shown this this dashboard. You can see uh, the yeah. So they're right. Here. Over here in China, um, you can see the extent that they uh, co-author by different uh, the different colleges um, at UW, uh, and again the journals that, that they tend to pub publish in, and uh, and here's a, a, a faculty level view of um, of different uh, collaborations. Um, the uh, another example uh, was Aga Khan University. Um, and they've done a lot of uh, collaboration in medicine, particularly. So um, this shows um, this shows uh, yeah the extent of their collaboration. Um, and again, this is uh, not something developed directly by Open Alice. This was this was a, a UW project, a UW uh, global office, um, and uh, it, it shows like since we offer. Uh, our data so openly, they're able to get everything they need and, and link it to their own data, uh, create their own um, their own dashboard with their own branding uh, on their own website. They didn't need to ask ask us. We did help a little bit. Like anyone can just go ahead and do this uh, without without needing to use any of our proprietary or any sort of proprietary. Um, like visualization software or anything, or uh, or even ask ask us permission. Although, of course, we'd love to hear about what you, what you're doing. Awesome, thank you, Jason. I, I think I do just want to re-echo that point that we keep learning about these really fantastic ways that people are using Open Alex data around the world, and we're really excited about them. And Absolutely, you don't have to contact us. You don't need to sign up for an API. You don't need to sign up for the GUI. But we do benefit from learning how people are using it so that we can share these examples with other people and sort of all grow together, but also so we can start learning what we can do better. And I think it is a bit of a radical shift uh, to think that you can just reach out when you find something that is wrong and we can fix it very quickly or um, that you can have things that you'd like to see in the future. We can collaborate towards getting those available for everyone. So. I do want to reiterate that, um, you know, especially in the context of, of global, this is something that's open and it's really one of the benefits. So I see there's a bunch of questions already in the chat and we're just at the time for, for 30 minutes for the recording. So I'll stop that and we'll move to the Q&A, but I'll say thanks everyone who is watching this recording afterwards and definitely reach out if you have any questions.